Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Let's Learn ES6. My name is Ryan Christiani. Uh, I work in Toronto as a developer and an instructor at HackerU. Uh, in today's episode of Let's Learn ES6, I wanted to go over some of the new things available with arrays. So we're going to do uh, three to four things today. Uh, first of all, we're going to look at how we can iterate over arrays, a new way to do that. So uh, already we have for loops, but we're going to look at something called a for of loop. We're going to look at the array from method and the array.find method. So first thing to get started, let's look at the uh, for of loop. So in JavaScript, by default, we can iterate over arrays uh, by using a simple for loop where you say like for var i equals zero, uh, i is less than, you know, some array dot length i plus plus. We also have the ability to use the for each loop, uh, but there's another way we can do this, and that's the for of loop. So let's start. Uh, let's make a new array uh, called programming languages, uh, programming languages. No, that's not right, is it? Pro, there we go, killed it. Languages equals, and I'm going to put three down here. Uh, let's say, well, JavaScript, I guess. We'll say Ruby, and let's also say Go. I've been learning a lot of Go lately. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. Uh, maybe there'll be a video series on that as I kind of like learn my way through Go. So if we wanted to loop over this, we would use a for loop, and we could say uh, for, you know, let i equals zero, i is less than programming languages. Actually, just so I don't spell anything wrong, I'm just going to copy that dot length. Probably should have come up with a smaller variable name. And then we could do like i plus plus or i equals i plus one. And if we wanted to console log, let's say uh, I really like, I really like um, the language, we'd have to do something like this, right? We go programming languages i save that and i seem to have maybe a syntax error somewhere here let's see if this runs just because it's not changing the color of that although now that i think of it i'm not sure if that really just changed perfect it works so in order to access the the properties from the array we have to call the array again use the bracket notation and access the the value that we want through the i because the i keeps it uh iterating and increasing but uh, similar to the for in loop, if you've ever done any enumeration over objects in JavaScript, the for of loop kind of like makes it a little bit easier for us. So we don't have to define, uh, you know, the length and the increment and all that stuff. So let's get rid of everything we have inside of here. Let's do the for of loop. So we can do for of let uh, language maybe of programming. I'm just going to copy and paste programming languages again, probably still in the clipboard, let language and language, spell it correctly, uh, of program languages, and that's it. So the idea here is that instead of having to say programming languages I, we can now just say language. And what happens, again, similar to how um, a for in loop works is the variable on the left here, the let whatever of program languages, every time it loops through, internally JavaScript or the interpreter knows how many times we need to do this, it will be reassigned the value of one of these here, one of the elements in the array. So if we clear this and hit run again, we get the exact same thing. And that's really, really, really quite nice. So it gives us this ability to, uh, without having to do sort of the boilerplate we're used to over and over and over again, just simply say, let some element or item of some array and then get access to it. It's pretty sweet. The next thing I wanted to look at was uh, the dot from method on arrays. So let's take a look at this, for example. And we've seen this already, uh, or a similar uh, solution to this already. But let's assume we again have like a, uh, a function called sum, not sun. And the whole idea here is that let's assume we have some function called sum where we want to pass it any number of values and then we want to just like reduce it down. We saw a solution to this using uh, the rest parameters early on uh, in one of the earlier videos. If you haven't seen that, you'll find a link in the description below. But let's just kind of walk through this example again. So the idea here is that we want to take any number of arguments passed to this and kind of reduce them down. Now, if you have ever worked with anything like this, you'll know there's a special thing called the arguments keyword. And if we go uh, and I call sum, actually, let's clear the side here so we don't get too much clutter. If I call sum, and let's just keep it simple, something like that, and I hit enter, we'll see this arguments object. And it looks a lot like it could be an array, and it's what we call an array-like object, but it's not an actual array. And there's some fun, funky things we can do to kind of make it into an array. We can call like array.prototype.slice.call and pass it in and kind of return an actual array. But 
with this new method uh, dot from, we can actually take array-like objects or other things and make arrays out of them, actual arrays out of them. It's really neat. So let me show you this. So if we go arguments, oh, and sorry, the real point here is that because arguments is not an array, we can't do anything like return arguments, arguments dot reduce. And then if we use like an arrow function here, uh, we could say uh, previous, oops, previous current, I'll just say cur, and we would want to return prev plus cur. Like we don't have the ability to do that. We don't have the reduce method because arguments is not an actual array. It doesn't have this method on it. So using, and actually we'll keep this line here, but if we can reassign arguments to equal array dot from, so we want to make an array from the arguments array like object. And then now if I clear this and hit enter, uh, oh, we're not even uh, console.logging anything. And I console.log and pass in this function. We'll actually get the value back that we want. And this is really great because array.from is used to create arrays from array like objects or other iterable objects. Now, an iterable object, um, and this is actually, if we go back to the uh, for of loop, the for of loop doesn't just work with arrays. It also works with what are called iterable objects. And iterable objects, let me bring this over here and show you, are uh, things in JavaScript that implement the next property, or sorry, the next method. So this is stuff like arrays, maps, sets, uh, things along those lines. However, not objects. We already have ways to kind of like iterate over objects, um, but there's a lot of different things. Uh, I believe strings are also considered an iterable object. So you can technically actually call array from on a string. So let's try this real quick. Uh, array dot from and take a string like this. Does this work? question mark, and actually return an array of each individual character, including the spaces. That's pretty cool because uh, it allows us to kind of take whole bits of text and maybe transform them a little bit easier and play around with them. It's pretty neat. Uh, we'll see, we'll take a look at in videos coming up, uh, map and set, and we'll uh, maybe play around with that as well because they are also pretty neat. The one last thing I wanted to look at today, so we've looked at for of, uh, we've looked at array from. Uh, one last thing I want to look at today is the array.find method. So if you've ever used anything like underscore or low dash, there is a method on those called find.find .find that allows you to kind of loop through uh, an array or a collection, as it's sometimes called, and find you know an object that matches your criteria. So with the, uh, uh, um, well, with JavaScript, we've never had that in the, the language itself. And the one great thing about kind of ES6 is that a lot of uh, libraries like underscore and low dash and stuff like that, although they're very similar, uh, kind of helped us kind of come up with things like, hey, we should probably have these in the language themselves. So let's take a sample of data. And I'm not going to type this out, so I'm just going to paste this over here. So let's assume we have an array of students. Uh, we have uh, four objects in here, uh, Steve, who is taking history, Mary, who's taking science, Lisa, who's taking physics, and Michelle, who's also taking physics. If we wanted to find uh, somebody who is taking physics, for example, we could use uh, one of those libraries, but we could also use the array.find for this. And array.find works like this. So uh, down here, actually, let's do this. Let's say uh, let... Uh, Let's call this physics. And actually, you know what? I'm going to add a bunch of space here so we can move this up. Do, 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 do. OK, so let's physics student equal function. Or sorry, what am I trying to do here? Uh, students dot find. And then you have to pass a callback function. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a simple arrow function here. And we want to find the student because uh, that'll get past the elements. Student, there we go. We will find the student, wow, just really killing it with typing today. Student uh, whose um, course, <clears throat> excuse me, is equal to, and then we're gonna have to match this, physics. It's a little bit of a long one-liner here. Maybe we should put some parentheses around this here, like such. And we'll just put the return keyword there just to make it easier for us. So if I console.log physics, console.log, console.log physics student, and I hit run, we'll get Lisa. 
Now you'll notice we don't get Michelle as well here. So dot find will find the first one and stop at that. So uh, we're not going to be able to get the other one. If you wanted to actually get more of these, you'd probably want to use like filter, for example. That's another method where we can actually return an array of the actual individual objects. But find will find the first one for us. And that's still great because sometimes you only want to just find one and kind of just do something with it. Another thing is there is the also the, uh, so along with find, there is find index. And in this case, it just finds the index of where this student is. So 0, 1, 2, that was Lisa. And this will just return the index number. These are pretty great. So again, uh, I think a lot of things in ES6 are really nice because they came from other kind of uh, community run frameworks and libraries and stuff like that, like arrow functions. There's a link, I, uh, if you watch the arrow function video, where I point to a video with Brendan Eich and Jeremy Akinash talking about how CoffeeScript had arrow functions and that kind of like pushed that a little bit forward in ES6 and stuff like find and index, find index, you know, these libraries implemented them and they were like, why aren't they in the language? Other languages have them. Let's have them as well. So uh, that's it for today. Pretty quick one. I uh, just wanted to do that. Um, but again, if you haven't seen already, head on over to letslearnes6.com. Uh, I'm writing a book. I actually was just writing the chapter on arrays. Uh, we're actually, there's going to be some more things in that chapter that we didn't touch on in the video today. So please check out the letslearnes6.com. Sign up for the email so that when I do pre-release it, you'll be able to um, actually get information on that. Uh, sample chapters are coming through soon. I'm actually going to reorder some of these chapters a bit so that it makes a bit more sense. Uh, yeah, so it's looking probably going to be about, I think about 60 to 80 pages, so not a ton. And again, with my book, uh, I don't want it to be like a definitive guide. There's actually lots of other great books out there. I think Nicholas Zack has just finished his Understanding Equinscript 6 book, and like that is a book that I got pre-released, uh, pre-order from, um, and I've been reading just an ebook version of, and it's great, great, great. But that's like more of a definitive, like really in depth. My idea with this book is like very much like these videos. Let's touch on these subjects. Let's get you working with them. And then if you want to go further, I actually have in the intro and probably the conclusion uh, more resources resources for where you can go from there. But I just want to get everybody kind of like up to speed as quickly as possible. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah. Subscribe to this channel. Uh, tweet about these if you really like them. Uh, please uh, add a comment if you think there's something you'd like to see in the future. Uh, maybe a different bit video series because this will be coming to an end shortly. Um, yeah, subscribe below. Head on over to letslearnes6.com. Follow me on Twitter at rchristiani. Other than that, take it easy. Bye.